Hey everyone, okay, so this is day six, or six out of a hundred YouTube videos as I sort of explore through kind of improvisational narration, freeform uh, explanation of kind of the thoughts on personal development um, that I've sort of cobbled together over the last few years. Uh, again, these are just sort of fun riffs for me to really get honed into my message and storytelling. And uh, I'm having a great time doing them, so thank you for coming back. Um, so where we left off was, again, in the pursuit of a one true choice. And in conflict with the survival drive of humanity, which was uh, built around our tribal nature, humans picked up a few self-sabotaging beliefs. Uh, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. I'm not perfect. I'm insignificant. And... I'm not good enough? Ugh. We'll see. I always mess those up every single time. We then ended up creating shadow material, taking parts of our reality that made us feel those self-sabotaging beliefs uh, and throw them in our backpack. And this in our inner world ends up creating a sort of uh, dark forest that's guarded by parts of our ego that want to stop us and protect us from running into things that will make us feel like we're going to die. Because the thing about uh, parts of us that we disown is that they one don't really feel good and really specifically when it comes for childhood development since most of our parents gave us these beliefs our survival depended on us not uh, living up to those or really feeling them deeply and so we really don't want to look at them it feels like a kind of death when we really inhabit these self-sabotaging beliefs um, and then we sort of described how over time the ability to traverse your mental landscape gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the shadow material gets bigger and bigger and bigger. As you continue to not want to go into there, um, you start realizing how messed up everything is. So what I wanted to talk about today are the two main ways that you, one, even figure out you have shadow material, and two, how to, again, in this sort of metaphorical breakthrough, uh, use parts integration work to bring shadow material into the light and integrate it into your personality. So let's imagine that we've got this dark forest where the conceptual tigers of our shadow material are living. The old paradigm used to be you got to go into the forest. You got to go into the forest. You got to fight your demons, slay the dragons, kill the conceptual tigers, gain their lessons, come out of the forest and bring it into the light, into what we call society. This is otherwise known as the hero's journey. And I love the hero's journey. Don't whatever I say on this other side of that is not me critiquing the hero's journey at all. My only problem with it is that it requires a lot of bravery. Um, and it requires a society that values bravery as a really high value. You need to, in that same sort of tribal mindset, you need to be cultivating a personal sense of bravery that's aligned with the tribe's needs so that people are going in and out of their conceptual forests all the time. Um, this is important because psychology got invented about 100 years ago, give or take 20 years. And yet people have had psychologies for the entirety of human existence. So something really important had to have happened for us to not naturally have people going into uh, the forest. So two things have happened, ultimately. First off is that the forest has gotten bigger. The forest has gotten bigger because the concepts that have been brought into human experience have just gotten more complicated. So the conceptual tigers have proliferated as the different issues of modern society have made our lives more difficult. That's the first thing. The second thing is that our guardians have gotten much better. It used to be that like when things went into the unconscious, they could not be seen ever again. Uh, but nowadays, our guardians that guard the forests of the unconscious, they are getting good enough at their jobs that it's actually really hard for you to find some of the shadow material. It's not uh, obvious. I actually have that backwards. Back in the day, it was obvious what your shadow material was. It was anything that threatened <laughs> the tribe or your own survival. Now, because we've gotten good at sort of withholding and hiding and we're just, we've gotten smarter, it's harder for us to recognize what our shadow material is and our tribe isn't designed to actually do that. In fact, a lot of the freedoms that we've sort of offered society 
have helped us figure out how to hide the worst of ourselves from everyone else. While social media, we're seeing the worst of people showing up, the real truth of the matter is, is that a lot of our shadow material actually gets hidden as we start isolating ourselves in different bubbles. So our new tribes don't have the same survival drive that they like. you need to maintain um, to have you get, be forced to go into the conceptual forest, uh, so the forest to fight the conceptual cougars uh, to come back out. So what's a person to do? Again, just hearing this, I've outlined the plan. You can just hold the intention of going into your forest and finding the things that aren't seen and everything that's ready to show up is gonna show up. It's a totally admirable goal. That's why therapy works. Um, and there's a whole literature on shadow work that's really important. But what I've found is if we are living our lives, say, in the valley, the view from the mountain actually helps us to see the shadow material. It's really hard to see the forest when you're living inside the village. And what's more is it's really hard to see the shadow of the village if you live inside the village. Now, we live in a really cool time because our concept of village has gotten so complicated that it's actually really easy to leave it, even just temporarily. Some people do it with psychedelics. Some people do it with spirituality. Some people just do it with creativity and watching Netflix. There's all sorts of ways and different holes around the village that allow us to take a different perspective of our reality. And ultimately, that's what I pitch. I believe that personal development and creativity are some of the best ways to unearth our shadow material. So if you do developmental work, developmental work is ultimately the act of taking, this is a very uh, technical definition, but I'll unpack it a little bit, taking the subject of one level and making it the object of the subject of a different level. I'm gonna say that one more time and then I'm gonna say it in simple terms. You take the subject of one level, so the subject of the forest, becomes the subject, the subject of one level becomes the object of the subject of a different level. So if I'm hanging out in the forest and I climb a little ways up the mountain, I can now look down at the village. Whereas before the village, I was a subject of the village. Now I'm outside the village being able to look at it. It has ceased to be my subjective reality and is now an object in my awareness. And where I am at on the mountain has now become the subject. <laughs> I'm a subject of that awareness. But now that I have a higher altitude, I can see more than the village. I can see the village's shadow. I can see the things that maybe the village can't see in itself. And most importantly, I can see the entire collective shadow, the collective human force, dark force with our conceptual tigers. I can see it a little bit better. As I go further and further up the mountain, I can see more of the village, I can see more of the village's shadow, and I can see more of the collective shadow in general, and I can even see the shadow of the level that I had just gotten to. And as I go higher and higher and higher, I see more and more and more. Now, here's the trick. Shadow material is very seductive. There's a reason why these heroes are always going into the forest. There's always something deeply necessary there. There's something that calls us, and it calls a part of us that we can't see because it's the shadow part of ourselves that we bring with us everywhere calls us to go towards other shadow things like begets like so the farther you move away from the collective unconscious's shadow the more the shadow part of you feels really uncomfortable it really wants to go back to the forest because that's where it sees as its home again this is all just a metaphor but what I found is that actually leaving the village instead of going into the forest, going to the mountain, going up the developmental levels, imagining a world that is separate and higher and different than the village can actually be some of the fastest ways to do shadow work because it forces you to have a little bit of discomfort. One, just the discomfort of going up, but then the discomfort of the shadow part of you going farther and farther from ostensibly is its home. And the second that you start feeling a weird feeling in yourself that's untapped shadow material it actually calls you to take a higher perspective from this higher perspective you can now look at yourself and you can see the shadow material and you can choose to just let it go so instead of going all the way into the forest you can actually release the shadow material again this is very metaphorical but it's very powerful 
to say like, hey, I don't actually need you anymore. Didn't know when you jumped on this ride, and of course you seem very scared. Go ahead and go back to the forest. I, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm not part of that journey anymore. I'm on this journey. I'm creating my own path this way. Because ultimately, what that shadow material is trying to do, it's trying to help the collective human evolution. If enough people address the human shadow, it will draw the entire human experience higher up the mountain. We'll actually start building the village on higher tiers of the mountain. And it requires people to sort of do their part and bring their part of the collective shadow up there and then releasing it. So how, and ultimately we do this so that we can make true choices. So this is kind of where things kind of loop back around. If I make a true choice to do something that's just fun, just for the sake of it, just because I would love to do it that's on top of the mountain, it requires me to develop myself to get there. The act of bringing along my shadow material will be the exact thing that holds me back. So as I find that my thing is more difficult, I'll start realizing, oh, there must be something holding me back because I see this thing that I just want. I'm taking steps towards it, but I'm not getting there. Some other force is pulling me back and it allows us to look at it. And then when we look at it, we can let it go through any various of techniques. And that will actually give us more energy to keep moving towards the thing that we want. I'm gonna stop there. Uh, if you're showing up for the first time, go ahead and subscribe to this video. Um, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I really like talking about this stuff. I really like telling this sort of collective story. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.